All right, so I'm going to uh, tell you about uh, vitamin D and its relationship to tuberculosis. A little bit about vitamin D. Um, it's been in the news a, a lot lately. Um, it's obtained from really limited dietary sources, the, the stuff that you tend not to eat, uh, fatty fish, uh, cod liver oil, yum yum. Um, also supplements, dairy products are supplemented in Canada, although you, uh, it, a, lot, a lot of people in the field would argue you have to drink an off, a heck of a lot of milk <laughs> to get enough vitamin D. You can also get it from solar ultraviolet B radiation. There is, however, a catch. The angle of the sun has to be high enough such that the UVB is not absorbed by the ozone layer of the atmosphere. So effectively, on a day, and forget the clouds, even uh, on a day like today, if it's sunny, you would get no UVB even if you're standing outside at, in the altogether at noontime. Basically, in Montreal, you only get it for about six months of the year uh, around noon. So as a result of that, um, a lot of people in the field feel that uh, uh, large portions of many populations worldwide are vitamin D deficient or insufficient. So what, is the link, what are the links between vitamin D deficiency and tuberculosis? If you want to go back far enough, you can go all the way back to Hippocrates, who suggested that people who live in north-facing villages who don't get much sun get more sun uh, when they're suffering from tuberculosis. This was known as heliotherapy. It's been around for 2,500 years, but was sort of reinvented in the 19th century with the advent of sanatoria in Europe for patients suffering from consumption or tuberculosis. However, the, the direct links between ultraviolet exposure and TB and treatment of TB and vitamin D were really only established starting in the 1980s when someone finally decided that, well, I'm going to take macrophages, human macrophage cells infected with tuberculosis, and I'm going to put vitamin D on them and ask, how are the bugs doing? And the answer was not so good. Vitamin D reduced the mycobacterial burden by about 50%. So on the one hand, you think, great, that all of this UVB stuff maybe has something to do with vitamin D. On the other hand, it's a weak effect. And it's not at all clear that a 50% reduction could account for the clinical benefit of exposure to ultraviolet light. So we asked the question, is this all there is? So my graduate student, Mark Verway, got dressed up in his space suit and his respirator, and he went into the level three containment facility uh, run by Dr. Marcel Baer, who is almost as tall as Victor. And he basically did a series of experiments and asked, what are the molecular responses of the macrophage to infection, and how does vitamin D affect them? And basically, we found that vitamin D has a number of effects in the macrophage. But above all, what was happening was, when the macrophage was infected, it issued a kind of molecular cry for help in the form of a massive secretion of so-called chemokines and cytokines, sort of the hormones of the immune system, to tell the surrounding cells that we've got an infection, please come and help. And vitamin D boosted that response. So here are two examples. We see that, um, where's my, uh, we see that, anyway, on the right-hand side, we see that vitamin D strongly boosts the production of interleukin-8, which is a chemoattractant for a type of cell called a neutrophil, and a neutrophil is really an antimicrobial bomb. Uh, and on the left, you can see that interleukin-1-beta, which we know can communicate with cells of the surrounding environment and induce an antimicrobial response, was also boosted by vitamin D. And we actually modeled this by co-culturing ma infected macrophages with lung epithelial cells. And in the presence of vitamin D, we could show that we could reduce bacterial burden by tenfold in this uh, co-culture instead of twofold with isolated macrophages. So I think once we start to model all of the potential effects, we're going to be able to show that if you maintain vitamin D sufficiency, it will be enough to probably block the, uh, the onset of a TB infection upon exposure to TB. Thank you.